Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Today we learn about hemoglobinopathies. Hemoglobinopathies is nothing but diseases associated with the hemoglobin. So the objective of this lecture will be application of structural knowledge of normal hemoglobin in understanding the genetic and pathogenesis of hemoglobinopathies. Hemoglobinopathies encompasses all genetic diseases of hemoglobin. They can be categorized into two main groups. Thalassemia syndromes wherein there is a problem in the globin chain synthesis and hemoglobin variants or abnormal hemoglobin wherein even though all the chains are intact there is some mutation in the chain amino acids that will lead to abnormal functioning of these hemoglobins. Predominantly these hemoglobinopathies uh, we will discuss predominantly the uh, sickle cell anemia because this is one of the important hemoglobinopathy which uh, since, uh, severely affects the functioning of RBC. So as you can see here, this is a the first picture shows the normal RBCs which are moving in our blood vessels freely without any problem. If you take a cut section of this RBC, what is there in the core of this RBC? Their normal hemoglobins are uniformly distributed inside this red blood cells. So it maintains the normal shape of the RBC and it will not affect its function whether in oxygenated or deoxygenated state. You look at the second category here, they are called sickle cells or sickle cell RBCs. This is because of the disease called as hemoglobin S or sickle cell hemoglobin. This occurs because of a very simple point mutation in sixth position of beta globin chain glutamic acid which is an acidic amino acid gets replaced by a neutral amino acid called as valin. This is single change in one single amino acid will severely affect the functioning of this RBC because of in deoxygenated state as you can see in this diagram. Uh, inside if you take a cut section of this RBC, instead of the uniformly distributed RBC uh, hemoglobin in the normal RBC, there will be fiber like formation because of the precipitation of uh, sickle cell hemoglobin or HBS especially this occurs in a deoxygenated state. So once this forms, this causes a distortion of the red blood cells and uh, because of this distortion they will not be able to uh, flow in the blood cells freely and they can get uh, clogged, can go se sequestrate and cause severe infarction or painful crisis called a sickle cell crisis. And uh, such hemoglobin will not be able to effectively even though there is no problem in oxygen carrying capacity of the hemoglobin, it has sig significantly affects normal functioning of RBC. And once such cells which are sickled and clogged will be destroyed because they are more fragile as compared to normal RBCs and be recognized by our reticular endothelial system and destroyed can lead to hemolyte hemolytic anemia also. 
So let us try to understand if you uh, from there what is there in the what is the in the, in the picture I showed you some fiber like formation in the sickle cell hemoglobin. What is exactly we show that microscopic uh, structure and what exactly is the phenomenon there? You can see if this is an oxygen just is a uh, diagramic representation how this fiber like structure forms inside the RBC. If this is an oxygenated hemoglobin and a deoxygenated state, it will look like something like this. It will have a kind of small uh, dent like thing in the surface, but at no point of time oxygenated and deoxygenated has any structure which is complementary to each other. So, there is no chance they will form aggregation. This is in a normal condition. Consider this uh, hemoglobin S or sickle cell hemoglobin. As I mentioned before, there is a single point mutation in beta globin gene wherein glutamic acid has been replaced by valine. This will cause C, C, uh, significant change in the structural conformation of hemoglobin structure. It will have a kind of abnormal J protrusion like this is a diagrammatic representation it need not be the actual picture something like this will happen on the surface this happens in an oxygenated state. When this hemoglobin yes gets deoxygenated in addition to what we see typically in a normal hemoglobin since this is also there, this is the same as that of normal hemoglobin whatever you see same thing happens in here. In addition to that, there will be an abnormal uh, protrusion which is because of this sickle cell change in the mutation whatever mutation has occurred. Now, there is a because of this complementary protrusion and the complementary inversion in the structure of deoxygenated hemoglobin yes they can sit one upon another and can precipitate and look like a fiber like formation. If thus this things can happen inside the uh, inside the lumen of the RBC that will cause distortion of the shape of RBC leading to sickle cell RBC as shown in this picture which can go and uh, clog the arteries and cause problems. So, this is an autosomal recessive luckility disorder where the chances of getting affected is only 1 in 4 child. As you mentioned that if uh, both parents are carriers by this uh, permutation combination you can see one may be totally normal, two may be carrier. Since it is an autosomal recessive disorder in a carrier state it will not affect the normal functioning of the hemoglobin because the normal gene which is there still able to take over the deficiency and take care some of the RBCs will be still normal without any sickle cell hemoglobin and since this RBC can function the patient will not have any problem. Whereas, if both the genes if he gets abnormal from the parent then he will have a sickle cell anemia. So, how this uh, sickle cell disease can be tested? One of the simplest test available in the lab even today is electrophoresis. The very knowledge that a acidic amino acid called as glutamic acid which carries a negative charge at physiological pH as replaced by a neutral amino acid called as valine will have significant uh, change in the charge characteristics of sickle cell hemoglobin. So, as you know electrophoresis is a technique based on the charge differences in a molecule. So, what happens is if you conduct an hemoglobin electrophoresis as you can see here if you apply the sample here and uh, sample moves from negative towards uh, positive that is cathode to anode 
if this is the lo uh, lower most if it is considered as a normal adult hemoglobin if it moves here so since in sickle cell hbs uh, i already mentioned acidic amino acid been replaced by a neutral amino acid since it loses one negative charge as you know that a negative charge gets attracted to the anode so here there is a less attraction towards the anode and because of which uh, the movement of this sample which has sickle cell hemoglobin will be retarded so it does not move as far as hemoglobin a adult hemoglobin this is a very clear evidence that uh, this is a sickle cell hemoglobin whereas that upper uh, ch uh, channel you can see we have one uh, normal band like an uh, adult hemoglobin and uh, one band uh, which represents the sickle cell hemoglobin so this uh, if you see uh, this kind of pattern in the patient this is a typical picture of sickle cell trait or he is a carrier state he is not inherited both abnormal genes one of the gene is still normal he will not have any severe problems now let us see what other test is available for testing or diagnosing this uh, sickle cell hemoglobin so since we know that molecular biology is one of the best uh, way to diagnose any disorders here we came uh, uh, this knowledge is been exploited for the benefit or diagnosis of hemoglobin s what happens here is if this is a hemo this is the beta globin g what they understood is uh, you know the restriction enzymes are very specific uh, endonuclease enzymes which can with the precision cut any given gene at a specific sites called as restriction site which has to be a palindromic sequence so what they understood is one uh, restriction enzyme called as mst2 in a normal adult hemoglobin hba it will cut the beta globin gene into two fragment one short fragment and one long fragment that means this is a uh, place there are three places uh, uh, where there is a uh, this is a restriction site is there in this place because of which uh, it is cut into a short fragment and a long fragment so if a normal person if you cut the beta globin gene by the mst2 restriction enzyme and then you run the electrophoresis something like what you done in here here you have done the electrophoresis of a protein here you are electrophoresing a dna or a gene again same principle applies negative to positive to that is a movement and the band moves based on its size so if it the band is a larger band like this this will move slowly from the point of origin where the short band like this will move further so but anyway a normal person will have two different bands whereas in case of this middle channel you can see the neither this band is there neither that band is there but there's one more band still very close to the point of application that means this band is even larger than the large band observed here the only way it can happen is this entire gene has come here without there is a cut that means in a person with a sickle cell hemoglobin because of the mutation at this point the mst2 restriction enzyme the restriction site will be lost it will no more recognize this site so instead of it will fails to cut that beta globin gene and the entire gene gets electrophoresis since the entire gene is longer than this fragment it will come very close to the point of application so there is only single band which is not all, not at all comparable to any of the two bands seen in a normal hba you see the third channel we have 
three bands. Unlike any of the first two, the first uh, uh, the lower two bands are comparable to a normal person, and the third band is comparable to that of sickle cell person. That means this is a typical picture of a sickle cell trait disease wherein one of the gene is normal and the other gene has a sickle cell problem. So, the normal gene will have two bands like any adult person and uh, abnormal gene will get only one band. So, the first channel will be normal. So, to, uh, what are the other hemoglobin variants which are very important because we are discussing only the important ones. Other is hemoglobin C which is similar to hemoglobin S. There is a point mutation in beta globin gene wherein glutamic acid residue is replaced with the lysine and one more called hemoglobin E where the position here is not sixth like hemoglobin C in beta globin chain only position is different in 26th position glutamic acid is replaced by lysine. So, what is the key difference here is in the hemoglobin S one acidic common acid which carries a negative charge is replaced by a charge less neutral valine that led to loss of one negative charge whereas, in both hemoglobin C and hemoglobin E the acidic common acid glutamic acid has been replaced by a basic common acid called as lysine which is positively charged. So, there is a double effect it's not only that this person is losing one negative charge he also gains one additional positive charge based on this logic what you can expect here is in case of both hemoglobin C and hemoglobin uh, E the band should come even closer to point of application it should not move even as far as hemoglobin S because hemoglobin C and E both of them not only they are losing the negative charge they will have an additional positive charge since they are moving towards the anode and positive charge here will same charge positive positive repel each other. So, that the movement of the both hemoglobin C and hemoglobin E be further retarded and the band will appear more closer than hemoglobin S. The next important uh, hemoglobinopathies which is worth uh, understanding is something called as meth hemoglobinemia. So, as the as in this condition uh, like uh, I already mentioned that uh, uh, iron which is core which is there in the core of hemoglobin should always remain in a ferrous uh, state, but the problem in the hemoglobin is it is always interacting with oxygen constantly for the sake of transport in our body. So, oxygen is a very highly oxidant molecule it can in somehow have a tendency to convert the ferrous to ferric, but it does not happen in a normal person. Why it is so? We will try to understand with this picture. So, you can see in a case of deoxygenated hemoglobin, you can see this iron which is prone for oxidation is pulled out of this plane of the ring. This is a ring which you can see in the fourth diagram here. This is a porphyrin ring plane. If I take a horizontal snap, this entire iron is pulled below tightly downwards in a person when person is in a hemoglobin in a deoxygenated state and kept away from the porphyrin ring by the histidine molecule. So, what happens is when it is an oxygenated state considering that it is a uh, highly oxidant molecule it is should not oxidize the ferrous to ferric it will just push 
the hemoglobin back towards the plane of the porphyrin ring. Now, we have uh, what is what happens is it becomes very close to the uh, valences of each nitrogen. So, uh, and there will be the whatever the actually oxidation means it is a loss of electrons. So, that uh, because they are very closer to this nitrogen atoms which are actually drawing the electrons, there will be an opposition to immediate release of these electrons from the iron. So, that the oxidation is prevented to further add to protection we have something this uh, distal histidine this is the proximal histidine and the distal histidine which is there which is capping on the oxygen when oxygen comes and binds the distal histidine from other side tries to pull that uh, uh, tries to uh, somehow prevent that uh, oxidation at capacity of oxygen by forming an hydrogen bond with oxygen. This further weakens the oxidation potential and safeguards, safeguards the uh, iron in the core of hemoglobin in the ferrous state only. So, that hemoglobin is functional only when it is iron is kept in ferrous state. Imagine that this uh, distal or proximal histidine is been replaced by some other amino acid, the entire uh, this function will be lost. So, whenever the oxygen comes near the hemoglobin, it has a high potential to turn the ferrous into ferric state. Once the iron turns into ferric state, it is called as methemoglobinemia and such a hemoglobin will not be able to release oxygen to the tissues and becomes useless and it can be life threatening. So, this has been meticulously avoided by the interplay of proximal and distal histidine as you already I already mentioned. Now, imagine that a person is having a mutation leading to either loss of proximal histidine or distal histidine with some other amino acid. Usually, tyrosine is get replaced, uh, uh, histidine is replaced by tyrosine, uncommonly understood mutation that leads to methemoglobinemia. The one more reason for formation of methemoglobin is there one more enzyme called as cytochrome B5 reductase, which uh, accidentally if at all in spite of this mechanism there may be a chance that some amount of iron may be oxidized to ferric state that will be immediately reverted back reverted back to uh, ferrous state by the enzyme called as cytochrome B5 reductase. Again if there is a deficiency of this enzyme cytochrome B5 reductase, we may uh, we may present the patient may present with the meth hemoglobinemia. The next important category of hemoglobinopathy is thalassemia. Thalassemia is there is a defect inherited defect characterized by abnormal or decreased formation of the globin chains based on the which chain is affected it can be either alpha thalassemia or beta thalassemia but most often they are they are inherited as autosomal recessive disorders but luckily most often we'll see only beta thalassemias not alpha thalamus. Why it is so? We will try to understand. If you look at the gene clusters of both alpha chain and the beta chain, alpha chains are present on chromosome number 16 and an adult person which has alpha chain, from each strand of chromosome we have two alpha chains. That means, total in the two strands we have 
2 plus 2 that is 4 alpha chains. You look at this beta, we have only one beta chain in one strand, in the two strands we will have one more that is total 2 beta uh, uh, genes for beta globin synthesis. So, the chances that all the all the four genes of alpha failing is relatively rare. So, that is why most of the time thalassemia we will see beta thalassemias often. So, what is the fate or different types of this alpha and beta thalassemia? So, the imagine that out of the four alpha genes, only one of the alpha gene is defective, the patient will not have any problem, it is called as alpha thalassemia silent. If the two of the alpha genes are defective, does not forming alpha chain, it is called as alpha thalassemia trait, still it will not disturb the patient much, it may have some mild hemolytic anemia. Whereas, the three of the alpha genes are defective, it is called as HBH disease and uh, if all the four of alpha genes are defective, it is called as alpha thalassemia major and sometimes called as high, high drops fetalis. That is because these last two categories are very severe forms and uh, it will be patient may not survive for long and especially in the case of alpha thalassemia major, the baby in the womb itself will be bloated with a lot of fluid collection and that is called as hydrops fetalis. Hydrops means something water collection, hydrops fetalis that means the baby itself looks very much bloated in the womb. Now, come to the beta thalassemia. So, when one of the beta chain is defect, gene is defective, it is called as beta thalassemia minor. And in case sometimes the beta thalassemia minor case, again depending on the percentage of defect, it is further categorized into intermedia. That means, minor is a mild deficiency of beta globin gene and uh, there will be more severe, it is called as intermedia, still it is not a major category because other gene is very much normal and sometimes in thalassemia intermedia, we have in addition to thalassemia, there may be HBS or HBC combi combining, there is one more additional defect. So, such category are called as thalassemia intermedia, not only thalassemia, there is a problem with the mutation also like HBC or HBS. The last category is called as thalassemia major where both the beta gene synthesis is defective. So, what can happen? How to diagnose? Other than of course, obvious symptom like uh, severe jaundice, hemolytic anemia, weakness etcetera, there will be we have to find a way to diagnose this case. What is the proof? What happens is if you do a electrophoresis, hemoglobin electrophoresis like I mentioned in case of uh, sickle cell hemoglobin, unlike sickle cell hemoglobin HBS, we have charge differences. Here there is no problem with the charge at all. It is abnormal or decreased synthesis of entire chain, beta globin chain. So, what we will see in a typical case of thalassemia, beta thalassemia is, we have an adult hemoglobin A and A2, A2 is a minor category and A is a predominant category and we have one more uh, band which appears, unusually appears in adult that is res corresponds to HBF, the fetal hemoglobin. So, this is an a compensatory mechanism of the body when the HBA is not forming effectively, as you know that uh, HBF is composed of alpha and gamma chain. So, but whereas the alpha chain is having no problem in beta thalassemia, the only the beta chain is having problem. 
So, body tries to form more of HBF by upgrading or reactivation of gamma genes and that forms more of more of HBF so as to protect the life of the person. So, as you can see here alpha chain is very much intact throughout the life whereas, the gamma chain production stops after birth and beta chain takes over. In case of beta thalassemia when the beta chain is defective or formation is defective as a protective mechanism uh, the gamma chain synthesis is upgraded and some amount of hemoglobin F can be formed in an adults in a case of beta thalassemia. So, I hope uh, you have understood the concepts of hemoglobinopathies and the major categories that is uh, hemoglobin sickle cell hemoglobins HBC HBS and thalassemias and uh, important uh, differences between HBS, HBC and HBE and how this uh, charge differences uh, can be exploited for diagnosing using electrophoresis or the point mutation leading to loss of restriction site is exploited on HBS for diagnosis using uh, uh, southern blotting in RFLP and also you, I hope you understood the, the thalassemias, the category types alpha and beta and uh, alpha being more rare because of the four genes are there for alpha globin synthesis and only two genes for beta globin synthesis and uh, why there is an appearance of hemoglobin F in case of thalassemia, beta thalassemia cases. Thank you for your attention.